Hey everyone, Anthony here, and if you didn't know, I recently released a new sci-fi short video called Project Brain. If you haven't seen it, it's linked in the description down below, so definitely go watch that because this video is pretty much the follow-up, I guess. Now, you may have noticed that I used quite a few green screen effects in Project Brain, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking them down and showing you how I made them. So, let's hop on over to Premiere and get this tutorial started. So, Project Brain opened with a documentary style video basically meant to dump a whole bunch of exposition. It is the simplest green screen shot of the entire video, basically just me on a white background. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new color mat, and I'm going to go down to this little icon right here and click color mat. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to drag this little circle right here down to white, and I'm going to hit OK. It can be named whatever I want, but in this case, I'm just going to name it white background. So now, as you can see, I have a white background in my media library, and I'm just going to click that and drag it into the timeline. I might extend it out a little bit. Then I'm going to select a portion of my green screen shot. I'm going to drag it into the timeline just above the white background. Next, I'm going to head on over to effects, and I'm going to search for the crop effect. Now, I'm going to basically just crop out anything that's not the green screen, including some of the darker, more wrinkled sections up there. Admittedly, this isn't really how you're supposed to have a green screen set up. Ideally, it'd be pulled tight and lit a little better, um, but I was kind of in a hurry, so yeah. But fortunately, it still works. So next, I'm going to go and search for the ultra key effect, and I'm going to select that and drag it onto the scientist clip. I'm going to set this to aggressive, and then I'm going to take the eyedropper and just click an area on the green screen. I might try a couple different times in a couple different areas. This gives me a decent starting point, and there are a bunch of settings in here to mess around with. I found that turning the contrast and the midpoint all the way to 100 worked just fine. Now, in cases where there are still some dark splotches left, you can kinda see one right here. In that case, you just create a little opacity mask, invert it, and then once you have your mask, you can resize it and then just drag it over the splotch, and just like that, it's gone. Finally, I add an adjustment layer, drag it over the scientist clip, drag a crop effect onto the adjustment layer, and set the top and the bottom to 13%. This creates the quote unquote cinematic black bars that are so popular. I can also add a LUT if I want or do some basic color correction. Uh, I might, in this case, I might just raise the shadows a bit on my face, maybe the exposure. I can resize and move myself around just to make sure that it's fairly well composed. And just like that, you've got me on a clean white background, pretty easy. Let's move on to the next shot. So the next major green screen shot was of my brother Raphael in a science lab. This one is slightly more complicated, but fortunately not by much. Obviously we're going to need to start with the background. In this case, I just used a freeze frame from this video clip of a pretty generic science lab. I should probably mention that all of the stock elements that I used for Project Brain come from a site called Envato Elements, which is this site right here. It's basically a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of stock footage, music, photos, pretty much anything you might need for a more complicated project like this one. This video is not associated with them in any way at all. I basically just signed up for a month with their student discount specifically for Project Brain. It was super useful, again, not associated with them, it's just what I personally used. Um, but yeah, back to the tutorial. So I'm just gonna drag the clip in, move the playhead over, right click, and hit add frame hold. Then I'm gonna delete this little part right here. I'm gonna extend this out a bit, and just like that, I've got a nice little still frame to work with. Next, I'm gonna take this shot of Raphael doing his thing, and I'm gonna put it right above the background. Again, just add a crop effect and crop out everything that's not the green screen. Again, use the ultra key effect, set it to aggressive, eyedropper, the whole deal. Next, I can grab this holographic HUD element with the brain and I can just drag it into the timeline. I'm gonna click it, go to effect controls, then I'm gonna go to blend mode and select screen. I can resize it and move it around to make sure that it lines up with what Raphael is looking at. Then I'm going to lower the temperature so that it's a little bluer and I'm also gonna raise the exposure. Next, I'm going to go back to effects and I'm going to search for the flip effect. I'm going to choose horizontal flip, 
and I'm going to drag that onto the brain scan. The horizontal flip effect is so that we're viewing the HDD effect from behind and not Raphael. It's a small detail, but it is important. Finally, I can do some basic color correction. You can see that Raphael has kind of a greenish tint thanks to the green screen, while the background is ever so slightly magenta. So I'm just gonna make sure that my shot of Raphael is selected and I'm going to drag the tint slider up a little bit. I'm also gonna search for Gaussian blur and I'm gonna add that to the background. In the effect controls panel, I'm gonna make sure that the blur dimensions are set to horizontal and vertical and I'm going to set the blurriness to about 10. Finally, I'm going to select all of these clips and I'm going to right click and hit nest. Just call this Brain Scan Raphael. Hit OK. The next thing that I'm going to do is add some camera shake to the shot to tie everything together. In this case, I'm using a free preset pack from a site called Cinecom.net, which is both a filmmaking website and a really successful YouTube channel. I recommend that you check them out if you haven't already. But in any case, I'm using their presets, so I'm going to head over to the correct folder, which is Fake Handheld Movement by Cinecom.net. I'm going to open that folder, and in this case, I just want wide, smooth motion, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to drag it over the nested clips. Playing it back, you can see that all of the separate elements move together like one shot, and it really helps tie them all together and look slightly more realistic. I mean, obviously this shot doesn't look 100% real, um, but it also doesn't look half bad. And if I want, I can just click on the nested clip and make some more adjustments. So in this case, I just want to raise the exposure on Raphael so that he matches the bright lighting of the background a little better. But yeah, in any case, there you go. The third and final green screen shot is the shot of the AI version of myself in the computer. This one is pretty similar to the white background shot, except this time I just kept the background black and dropped this HUD element on top of it. Um, but yeah, there's no need to go into a ton of detail because there honestly wasn't much to it. If you learned anything from this video, be sure to let me know by leaving a like. And if you aren't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I upload short films, reviews, and of course more tutorials just like this one. Project Brain is linked down below if you want to watch that again. Um, but in any case, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.